Hello. Oh, I like that little pompadour you got going on there. Oh, I you just like flipped it up. It looks very 80s. Does it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, let me check my. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love it. I got I the like... wave going on. I used to do this with gel. Oh. I used to like try and get a little volume. I love it. We're gonna fix this. I'm like, where's your leg warmers? <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have scrunch shocks that I I brought back. You know, yeah. they're, they're like still. They're a trend. Okay, I can. There you go. The, the pump kit went down. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's looking out. I should have done like a really big, like uh, a really big one, like a, a bump, yeah. because I mean, the fights were in Jersey last night. So. Oh, yeah. The, None of the girls were out, though. The Jersey boys, the, the boys were out. The they Jersey held it City down. Boys. Yeah. But um, yeah, not the girls. <laughs> or Jersey Shore, Jersey City. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knew. Um, man, the fights were pretty crazy last night. Actually, people well, were saying that they weren't that great, but I think the shenanigans like within the fights. Yes, there were some interesting storylines, interesting uh, moments and events that happened. Mm -hmm. It was really weird. But uh, let's talk about the main before I forget what happened, because you know how that like drinking we had like a little fight party and the drinking fog will come over and kind of erase your memories of what happened but dude like that fight was a crazy fight it's already settled in for me yeah just a <laughs> side note yeah <laughs> the drinking fog is gone what happened did Poirier win just like we predicted oh uh no he um he did. He did a He had a valiant effort. It was a very competitive fight. Um, it was another another fight where I think people are going to be able to game plan a little bit off of it, like see where Islam was kind of uh, showing a couple of little openings. But man, I think out of everything, I'm just so impressed with Islam's like striking and how he's improving his game every time. He looked less awkward on the feet. I think. Um, with Khabib, a lot of times, like, people would be like, oh, I don't know, man. If he fights a good striker who can defend his takedowns, then he might get let up. And Islam, a lot of the rounds that he won were just on the feet. Like, he couldn't get a takedown, but he was still winning the exchanges on the feet. And he was either staying uh, level with the amount of volume that Poirier was throwing or landing more power, being able to do more of his shots. But it was really cool to see because Poirier's boxing is on another level when it comes to, like, that division and um, just all UFC. But Makachev was able to just hang with him on the feet and really show him stuff and hurt him a little bit on the be on the feet before he went for his takedowns. I think what I've noticed about Makachev, Makachev and um, Makachev. Makachev. Yeah, I always fuck it up. But <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a in there. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, he sets up his takedowns. He goes <laughs> <laughs> changes level. What I think I've I've noticed about him and Khabib that is so special. What what they lack in certain areas because I mean they're dominant grapplers both yeah. of them. But what what makes up for it is their tenacity, their pressure, their cardio, mm. and just the, the, the volume and intention behind those punches. Yeah. It's um, sometimes when I see people that are very technical, they can be a little less urgent. They're trying to hit those nice crip shots, and he just gives no fucks when he yeah, throws. Yeah, no. And I think that makes the difference. It makes it really hard to fight someone like that because you can't breathe. Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, turn your punches over properly. You can't, you know, do all of these technical things that, that you're trying to do that you've trained so well to do mm -hmm. uh, because somebody's just constantly in your face. Yep. And, and you know, as soon as you get comfortable in that firefight, they're going to drop down and grab you. Exactly. So anyone with that pressury wrestling style, if they just throw their punches and throw their strikes with confidence, there's a good chance you're really going to get ahead against someone who's trying to stay up, trying to box, trying to just outstrike but not get taken down. Like it's a real, uh, it's a really intimidating thing finding, fighting someone like that. There, there is an energy that, that you feel, and that is so draining in mm -hmm. those moments because people that are technical, that are used to using their range, need that space. They need a little bit of a breather. Mm -hmm. You know, they just need a little moment to, to get that technical thing going. And when you fight somebody with pressure like that, 
with cardio like that, it's really hard to do, and it'll take you out of your game. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was really impressed with Poirier, though. Uh, there were a couple things that he did that you could see that confidence started coming back to him. Like, every time he got taken down, you're just like, ah, he got stuck all around. Like, that first round, it was real crazy the way that um, you could see the game plans for both fighters. Like, Islam was coming forward. Poirier threw, like, a big uppercut as he changed levels. But it was a feint. You're like, no! And then he went right onto the leg and got that, like, big takedown up against the fence. And they were stuck there, or Poirier was stuck with uh, Islam on his back for most of that round. And then, like, right after that round, then you're just like, all the Poirier fans let out a big sigh, like, this ain't going to be our night. You saw Theo Vaughn in the back just, like, standing up and <laughs> screaming with his arms. I'm like, bro. Oh. <laughs> what was he saying? <laughs> he was just like, screaming. Ow! He was just very animated. Yeah. Like, it was, it was a little distracting for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're distracting Poirier. Stop it. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was really a, a kind of a, a letdown for all the people who were rooting for the underdog in that round. But then he came back like he was defending the takedowns in the second. He got that big reversal in the third. Um, yeah, there were a lot of moments that Poirier kind of had that elbow that cut oh, him yeah. in the fourth. Like, there there were so many little moments where you're like, okay, I think he's going to get it. And then the end of the fourth round, I think that's where the height of the drama happened because he had just cut uh, Islam with his elbow, and then Islam had him, like, pinned up against the fence, and he started sinking in the mm. gilly. And he was talking to everyone, and he's just having fun in there and like, mm, I'm going to get it. And the commentators go, you can see the blood gushing out of his forehead. You're just like, it's going to happen. <laughs> but then the fifth round happened. I know. Mm. It's, um, it it would have made a wonderful story. It, it really would have. Like that's, um, you know, it's kind of like one of those movie yeah. fairy tale ending kind of stories. It, yeah. it didn't happen that way, but... There, there are so many positive takeaways, you know, as as a fan, as an athlete watching that fight. Um, I just in admiration of Justin Poirier and the way he holds himself. I mean, he took a brutal headbutt Oof. that broke his nose. And when he sat down in the corner, his cornermen are talking to him. And he's like, it's fine. It's fine. Like, it's nothing. I'm like, what bro, G? I know that fucking hurts. <laughs> and then to be like, you to repeat it. Like, Oh, I mean, you just saw it instantly. You see, it, it was here, and then the hip <laughs> happened, and it was like, eh. <laughs> oh man, to fight through that. Mm. I mean, to to sustain that blow, and then to fight through it for another few rounds. It's just, it's so painful. Yeah. But that just like speaks to like what an athlete he is, mm -hmm. and um, I I just I have a lot of respect and admiration for him. So much, man. So much that um. How much were you freaking out? Even though he does this every fight, but how much were you freaking out every time he fixed his shorts? Oh my fucking God. <laughs> I swear to goodness. That is the most frustrating tick because no, seriously. <laughs> I I think I was saying last night, I want a clicker and I want to count how many punches he took because his hands were down fiddling with his shorts. So I I am defending Dustin with this because I do feel like Every time he gets hit, it's when his hands are up. <laughs> it's during an exchange. I feel like he's not getting hit when he's fixing his shorts. But I haven't done the research. So I think we do need to get a clicker and go back and watch tape and <laughs> see how much that's affecting him. Because it's an easy fix, right? Like, okay. If, Cut if, your shorts shorter. We have we have seamstresses yeah. that are ready to to modify these shorts to whatever makes them more comfortable. If I was his wife, I would demand that he wears the little panties. Hoochie that, Daddy um, shorts. Yeah, <laughs> the um that the Rock wore in that movie. Oh God, no. Yeah, the little <laughs> the little it. wrestling panties. That's what I would make him wear. I'd be like, no, we're not we're not doing this again. You're putting those on, and you're going to be touching your thigh if anything. No, do you not remember when Dennis Hallman wore those bikini freaking wrestling type shorts in there? Yeah, but and I think, what happened? I think he didn't wear the right one. Like he had like Brazilian cut. <laughs> there are no right ones. No, I know what you're saying though. His were like like female speedos. 
he it was doing the opposite of what a cup is supposed to do. Like it was splitting the balls in half instead. And of- he's <laughs> and he's a grappler. He's like he's a bottom guy. He should know. I'm he like, know why better. would you? You're gonna end up in positions that you're gonna be really upset about when those pictures come out yeah. after those fights. It's like when a girl wears a top and she knows she's doing some physical activity where something's gonna pop out, but it's a cute top. Like that's what he was doing. He's like, it's cute shorts. I like them. <laughs> That happened to me the other night at Salsa. I was wearing a tube top and somebody spun me and then it like, it slipped down. Luckily I had my little pasties on hey, but, and it prepared. was dark. It was dark, but I just thought, I thought that, you know, strapless top had a little bit more. A little more uh, tension. Yeah. Is you worn it too many times? Guess washed so. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a little bit too loose for me. Oh man. Maybe but these are things you need to test out beforehand. Yeah. Maybe if Hallman had uh, pasties for his balls, we could still wear, men could still wear the little panties in the octagon. Oh my God. I mean, Brazilians were doing it for a long time before and they never had that kind of issue. Yeah. He just didn't get the right brand. Oh my goodness. It was Tisk. probably an American brand. Probably. That's why. <laughs> but um, yeah, they need to do something. Give them the short shorts, like the really sh- short, like uh, Muay Thai shorts where yeah. they're hiked up. Basically, you see like side butt. They're cut. Yeah. There's nothing to fiddle with, you know. Or Get like tuck them in. There. Tuck them into those like compression shorts that yeah. they give you to wear underneath the board shorts. I'm just... It was really frustrating. <laughs> it was uh, don't give him a little bit. Well, give yeah, him a little bit of eventually. space before we bring this up. We'll 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 go come back around in six months. I'll, I'll I know we'll see him at a fight out. week. <laughs> we'll be sitting down to dinner. Like, hey, I got a question. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's that, so frustrating. It's uh, it just, uh, it's yeah. It's an easy fix, and there's probably a lot more he could be doing with his hands <laughs> instead of in a fight in the shorts in a fight but what i was really mad about was the one moment where him jumping the gilly would have made the most sense he spun out he like tried to turn away he tried to kick out and that's when uh what what is that takedown called that little like ankle thing oh i know what you're talking yeah, about yeah it's a fuck i know the name for it but it's not a treetop but it's like that where you just kind of dip the ankle and then bring them back around and it's so crazy how uh how much like power you can generate from that little moment yeah just like Some that physics. little phew, Yes, both legs come up. He flipped them around and was able to jump on the head. But that moment, because he had his foot like this, you could see Pori thinking, mm, maybe I could cover the head right now, but everyone was telling me not to do it. And in that little moment of hesitation, Islam was able to get that takedown. I was so mad for him because I'm like, I bet if they weren't telling him not to do it, he would have jumped for it. And that was the position because he was extended. His neck was kind of out there to be grabbed. I felt like he could have got his chest over his head and really mm-hmm. gotten that, especially because he was so committed to that foot. But it is what it is. It, and it was a beautiful uh, guillotine uh, Islam went for before he got that dart. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it was really like nice. Yeah. That one hurt my feelings. It did. That, it did. that one I'm hurt. I'm like, you can't. At least he didn't guillotine him. <laughs> at least we got to we got to look at the positives. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was such a crazy fight. Um, and I really, um, I, I was kind of interesting how uh, Islam summed up his last few title defenses. Like he was saying that he didn't feel that energy like he felt when he won the belt. And he wants to go up a weight class now so he can feel that energy again. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I don't uh, – he's, he's a big 55-er, so I don't think 170 huge. is is like a, a huge leap for him mm-hmm. the way it would be other 55-ers. Especially with his style, too. Yeah. Like, he has that Usman style. You know, he's able to just – come forward, pressure, get to the takedown, hit really hard. Imagine how hard he's going to be able to hit without that crazy of a weight cut, too. Absolutely. It adds something to, like, your confidence and your cardio. Um, You're throwing with literally more weight because you didn't have to do as drastic of the weight cut. So he probably won't 
be really dieting until maybe a few weeks out in order to make that way. I don't think he blows up that much. I mean, you never know. It's it's always crazy to me when I see people go up a weight class. Prime mm. example is Jeremy Stevens. Yeah. Like this man was, you know, starving himself to stay within the the 145, mm-hmm. you know, featherweight division. Yeah. And as soon as he decided, his body was like, party. <laughs> Let's, Let's go. go. As soon as he went up to 55, his body just filled out. Yeah. And then he was having just as uh, uh, just as challenging of weight cuts trying to make 55. <laughs> That's true, yeah. This is the uh, same with, like, Oliveira. Yeah. He, uh, like, this just happens. Your body finally has some space to breathe, and it'll just, like... It'll just fill in all the nooks and crannies. Yeah, it's like, I've been waiting for this moment for yeah. so long. Thank you. And they just run with it. It's like when you uh, move into a new place and it's a little bigger, and you're like, man, I don't have enough furniture to fill up this place and then all of a sudden you're a hoarder like there's, <laughs> there's stuff in every corner of every I feel room attacked. Like, <laughs> i mean the set looks pretty clean now but that's because we have a sheet <laughs> over all the crap i've acquired <laughs> over the years all of a sudden all I of a just sudden have so many more plants and crystals and, yeah. and things that i don't need but they make me feel better random uh Action figures, trinkets, fucking Adam. <laughs> um, what uh, what matchup are you more interested in seeing for Islam Makhachev? Because we have Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad coming up. So if he were to move up, it would be a fight against one of those guys. Do you think that he could get right in the mix like that? I actually, Maybe. after you said, I mean, I know that they're under same management, but I would love to see him against Kamaru. Oh yeah. I mean, I feel I like mean, he's fought. Ali people have fought each other before, right? Probably for the belt or for high stakes. I feel like, but yeah. But I mean, I feel like Usman is still like right there. He's still that guy, and I feel like that would be a great way to see exactly where Islam is. Yeah, in the mix at one seventy. Yeah, because um, I mean, another fight they can make is uh, Chimaev, and he just beat Usman. So that's, like, another crazy, like, star-studded fight that you could just pull out of your ass for 170 before he challenges for the belt. But if, let's say, I don't know. Well, Leon Edwards, I I, I hate saying this. What are you going to say, Angela? Don't say it. (sighs) Don't say You can't take it back once you say it. What are you going to say? Leon Edwards and Bilal Muhammad aren't the most exciting fighters. Well, I think when it comes to like name, but like I love Leon Edwards' style. I love the way he fights. But when it comes to like people getting excited when they hear, oh, this guy's going to fight. It's like a lose lose with the two of them. Like, <laughs> No, I, I'll say this. So I get excited when Leon Edwards fights. Yeah. But the matchup does not excite me because like both of them, I feel like Leon can really like. He's so beautiful to watch. Yes. His, his technique, he's so precise. It, it really is a sight to see. And then there's Bilal, who I'm not saying he does not deserve <laughs> it. I'm not saying he hasn't earned it. He definitely deserves a title he's shot. He's not a sight to see. <laughs> that came see, out wrong. You were worse than what I said, <laughs> so. Were, you set me up. No. <laughs> I'm off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Leon. I love the way you fight. I'm just saying it. Like, so does Jess. Sorry, Bilal. I'm really impressed by the way you're able to make every fight look the way it does. <laughs> it's impressive. As a fighter, I'm impressed by it. As a fan, <sighs> you said that well. Yeah, okay. you said that well. <laughs> you said that well. Just them together, it, it does not um, equal fireworks for me. Yes. Like like in any dimension, any universe, anything like that. It just doesn't. <sighs> But it could. It could be fireworks. It's just I don't think people are going to be lining up to see it. But I think if it's cool, I think it does have a good possibility of being cool. Like Edwards Usman. Or Bilal, uh, what was the fight? There was a fight where he finished it recently, and everyone was like, holy crap. Um, Oh, against Sean Brady? Was yeah, it Brady? yeah, and it's just like, oh, okay, like Bilal's exciting, you know. So, but he had a good dance partner, so like yeah. it, it does take that. It's like we watched, you know, Strickland and Costa last night. Oh, and, and we had no idea that that was gonna be 
the so snore fest that it was lackluster. Yeah, like and they just they didn't bring out the best in each other for whatever reason. I don't right. know. I mean, we saw some excitement like at the last thirty seconds of the last round. Yeah, I don't know why that was a five round fight either. No, me neither. <laughs> I feel like Costa just really needs three rounders. Mm-hmm. Like, why did why did why did why you did guys you do, do that, that to him? him? Why did you do that to him? Why did you do that to us? <laughs> <laughs> he was running the whole time because he didn't want to gas out. Like he didn't want to gas out. He didn't want to get hit by those stab kicks, those uh, jabs. Like Strickland has a great way of sapping someone's energy because, I, and I think I've said it before. He's just like uh, when you're playing one of those video games where the wall is coming at you, oh, and you just gotta worst. run fast and jump over obstacles and stay away from the wall. Like that's what Strickland does. He's just this wall coming at you. And there was one point where um, DC was like, oh, "I wish uh, Strickland would cut him off." But that's not Strickland's style. Like, he follows. He follows you like a fucking, like, demon. And every time you think you can, like, angle off and get, like, a good angle on him, he just follows. Mm -hmm. And if he didn't follow, if he did, like, kind of sidestep and cut Mm -hmm. off, I feel like that would have lined up more offense for Paulo, uh, like, lining up the cross and everything, if you're, like, stepping to the side and trying to cut the cage off. But the way that it's, like... Strickland just figured out a way to goon his way through a fight. Like, yeah. he he shuts off all offense for people and is very unorthodox, um, even though he's sticking with, like, two or three things that he's good at. And it's just, like, a really funny way of of attacking matchups. Like, you, you can tell he spars a lot because he's able to just figure out his own style and how it can work against every other style. Mm-hmm. But uh, that includes just following people, just walking right in front of them and making sure they never have a second to breathe. Yeah, so there's no angle to, like, cut out on. No, no. It's just you're just trying to breathe. You're trying to breathe. You're trying to land something on him. And every time you throw something at him, because he's right in front of you, he's able to get that shoulder in the way, like, elbow frame, do something to deflect it. So he doesn't really get hit. At all. And to not get hit against Paulo Costa, that's a, a pretty big feat. It, it definitely is. It's impressive. Um, I, I just, I wish that that fight had been a little bit more of what my <laughs> expectations led me to believe was going to happen. Well, we saw the Whitaker fight with Paulo Costa and we're like, all right. All right, he's back. Yes. And then we saw the, the Strickland fight with Duplessis and we're like, yo, that was exciting. Mm-hmm. So we're like, this, you put two people from those events together and you're like, this is I a fight. I feel like, I don't know, when I saw them at the presser, I feel like they have like this secret friendship. Like I feel like they're going to be friends afterwards. And they were like really trying not to ruin the friendship. Yeah. I just had this weird feeling that they were really worried about after the fight. Yeah. They like want to hang out with each other. There was so much respect. It was sickening. I was (laughs) like, like, who are these people? I know. They're they're kind of the same person, only Paulo Costa is like Brazilian. Yeah. So, <laughs> but when it comes to their online personas, I think Paulo Costa is like the Brazilian Strickland. Yeah, I feel like they just want to hang out with each other. So they were trying not they to do anything to. <laughs> That's what they want to do. <laughs> you realize I'm editing editing that out. You understand that, right? Okay. Just so, just so we can. <laughs> it's Pride no Month, surprises. everyone. Did you see? Uh, <laughs> I was cracking up um, off of uh, Luke Rockhold's post. Did you see it? No. He he did some stupid Stop like it. tongue in cheek. Right now. Okay, <laughs> on his Instagram. Yeah, and it was a uh, Happy Pride Month. What's his name? Post Luke Rock. <laughs> what's right. what's his is, name? I'm foggy. That. I told you the fog has rolled in. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those mornings. I love it. <laughs> At least I'm being honest. Wait, which one is it? Um, I believe it's. This one, yeah. Post a little grappling video, and you gotta wait for the end. You gotta wait for the end, but he was very... Oh, we oil checked him. (laughs) (laughs) You gotta do a play-by-play. All right, so he's just, he's wrestle-fucking this guy, for sure, (laughs) which is, you know, on par with Pride Month. Yeah. Oh, that was it. Okay. Was it just the oil check? It was the oil check and the little oh, and the like split. mount at the end. 
Yeah, he back mounted him pretty hard. Oh, yeah. there's there's a lot of gratuitous shots in this. Yes, he's there's, he's there's a lot of crotch shots. I think it's for his OnlyFans. He has an OnlyFans, right? He's trying to get those uh, numbers up. Yeah, but he's part of the athlete paid program. Oh, okay. so he's not supposed to be doing anything. Well, anything I mean, like that. I think most of the athletes still do that. Well, get in the numbers. Just up. double dip in. Yeah. Like a little not, double dip. They didn't say you can send a little foot pick here or there. You know, they didn't say you can uh, entice people in your DMs. Well, now from what I have heard, from what I understand, is that it was um, very successful with mm. the athlete program, what they were trying to do with like changing their brand and everything like that. So uh-huh. I, I don't know that that's going to be happening anymore. Yeah. Well, I'm no longer. Uh, in the athlete program, so um, we'll see if I resort to feet pics yeah. <laughs> in the near future. <laughs> as long as as long as I keep dressing up as Paulo Costa, there's a <laughs> there's a chance Adam will divorce me, and then <laughs> and then the foot pics will be sl- flowing. So, we'll <laughs> I mean, you're already married, so. It's it's challenging for me who who is single. I wonder how attractive my dressing up as uh, Islam Makachev is. I think it probably up to your <laughs> up to your numbers. <laughs> you gotta post it on your page and see what happens. I, oh, I don't think I did. No, I did. You I posted did. on your uh, on, on your my page? OnlyFans. Yeah. Oh, nice. Did you get any love? I don't think so. See, you you should have uh, done a little strip tease. As That's Islam just Makhachev. Not, <laughs> Islam Makhachev it's just not his, it's not his thing. I was going for like very realistic, you know. We can uh we can recreate cre- uh, recreate we can recreate the uh the finishing move, the um takedown to the submission. Oh. And then as a celebration, you strip. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll work that in. That'll be my celebration dance. Yeah, it'll be a celebration dance. <laughs> People will love it. They'll love it. They'll love the beard. They'll love, there's definitely a niche market for like women with beards. There's got to be, right? It has to be. Especially with no mustache. That's like super niche. Um, Extra yeah. niche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the Costa fight was pretty... <laughs> Going back to the Costa fight, um, the Strickland Costa fight, how crazy was it that one judge gave it to Costa? Dude, what the fuck? What are they doing? I don't know. And he screwed up one other, uh, at least one other fight. Yeah, I think it was the first fight on the card. And I'm over there rolling my eyes because the commentators are like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening. This is going to mess up people's careers. And I'm just like. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking Um, of which. um, I mean, I don't know that it's messed up your career. I think your career is like a pretty awesome trajectory. You know, as as somebody on the outside looking in, I understand it's Thanks. like affected your your money income, like you know, coming in. I get of, that a lot of money, but I mean, you're you're still there, you're still kicking ass, and I think people like most of the fans and your supporters like know what's up. Thank you. Yeah, but um, if I wasn't as resilient, you know, and just like kind of like fuck you to every slap in the face that I've gotten. Uh, a lot of people could have easily quit if, if you've gone to the judges as many times as I have and like not gotten a win you thought you did. Well, and a lot of people would have gotten cut. Yeah, that's true. So I've been like lucky in that sense. Um, lucky that they respect the fights that I put on. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot of exciting fighters that have been cut for less too. Yeah. So is, there's a lot of luck there too. Um, so yeah, that could have ruined my career as well. Getting cut from the UFC twice. Like there's, there, I don't think there's many people who've come back twice. Maybe like Chase Sherman. But I'm not sure if that was once or twice. But I don't think there's anyone who's gotten cut and come back to the UFC twice. So easily that could have. And the judge that scored, um, one of the judges that scored my Gedalia fight. Dave for Torelli. Gedalia, yeah. He was one of them. Yeah, he was this guy. Yeah, he was the one that scored the fight for Paulo Costa. Yep. So imagine you get two of these knuckleheads on an important fight card and – they score the fight for the other person. There's no, like, yeah, there's no repercussions for that. The one judge that got the fight right looks crazy because he was the one that didn't see it the way it was supposed to be. You know, could you imagine if Dave Torelli and Crosby were, like, right? the judges on that same fight? 
I'm pretty sure those were the judges or, on my Gedalia thing. Or what's her name? Adelaide Bird? <laughs> yes, yes. She, like, forgot her new prescription glasses that's, you know, letting her see clearly. She forgot her um, Adderall that would keep her up during fights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's taking a nap. Um, yeah, this and that happens all the time. And there's nothing we could do about it because we have short memories, and the only people who remember are the fighters that got fucked. Mm-hmm. But um, this guy was luckily alone. Dave Torelli was alone in his uh, fights where he kind of messed up. It was the first one, I think, versus it was Lima versus somebody else. That guy who got bit <laughs> in his last fight. Um, Mitch Ross Raposo. Yes. Andre Lima and Mitch Raposo. Yeah, Andre Lima obviously won at least two rounds. Could have been three. Um, and then, uh, Torelli scored for the first two rounds were for, um, Rapasso. Yeah. So it, it's just kind of like watching that fight. I was like, there's no way this guy won two rounds. Uh, there was one close round, I feel like, but you still could have scored all three for Rapasso. And then in the, uh, Strickland fight, he gave two rounds to Costa, or what? He gave F- four. Four rounds to Costa. He gave four rounds, and he four gave the rounds. last round to Strickland. Which round did he give to, oh, the last round. The last round. That's so wild. Like, I couldn't really think of any round that Costa won. I, I can't either. Like, there, the other judge gave four rounds to uh, Strickland. Who did he uh, score? Which round did he score for Costa? So, Sal D'Amato and Chris Lee mm. all scored at the same they g- oh sorry, Saldamato gave um, Paulo the first round. Okay, and that was actually a closer round, but he was still walking backwards the whole time. Like yeah, yeah, I w- I would have given all five to Strickland. I thought it was a shutout. So did I. I mean, I I completely agree. Yeah. I don't. Uh, there was a funny moment in between rounds um, with uh, Strickland and uh, Nixick. I forget what he said, but I was like, yeah, what the fuck? Like, he knew the cameras were on him. But I forget what he said. He was like, it's time to get out there and, and bury some bodies or something like that. Do you remember that? No. I was just like, man, I need to, like, practice some lines with Adam for those big moments where you know the camera is there and you're mic'd up and he could just say something ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like, I gotta, happen. yeah. Like, <laughs> I really want him to just be like, I want you to get on top of this girl and fuck her. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> just something and say it with a straight face and really, like, sell it like a Rocky movie, you know? Like, no, you gotta do your hashtag, like, come on, Ange. It's yes, bitch fucking season. Yes, yes. That's what, Ange, you know what time it is. You know what season it is. It's not spring. It's not winter. It's bitch fucking season. <laughs> yeah the slaps slap on the butt i get out there big ass double leg jump on her back bam hump hump finish <laughs> hump ko oh man we haven't had one of those we had a titty ko but we haven't had a hump ko yet i mean we did have a I mean, Eileen, Aileen, Aileen, how do you say her name? Oh, yeah. Uh, Aileen uh, Perez. Yeah, she twerked on somebody while she was ground and pounding him. She did, right? She did. Yeah. She had a, a interesting fight, too. It was it was a little streets beefy, but there was a lot of rolling around that I was like, eh, I wish these guys would just throw down in front of each other. But there were some crazy moments in that fight, too. Uh, the first round was really strange to me. Yeah. There was just, there was a lot of, um, a, a lot of reversals. A lot of hugs. <laughs> a lot of hugs, a lot of reversals. A lot of hugs and rolling on the floor. <laughs> yeah. How did that happen? So I'm watching this and, you know, I'm trying to get better at my jujitsu journey, but I'm watching this and I'm like, how the fuck are both of these girls able to we'll see? What happens is it's science and physics. Oh. The ass is so fat and so heavy. If you if you put it up too much, if you're not getting your hips down, it's I mean, it moves. Okay. And then any little any little movement can cause a big tumble and that's what happened. Okay. Like, yeah. It's, so it's like it's like when you, when you see those rocks balanced on top of each other, mm-hmm. you have to use a flatter rock. If you use a rock that's too round, then mm-hmm. they're just going to roll off of each other. They were just too booty heavy. Too much booty in the pants. Yeah. 
And it was two of them. So it was just like two, it was like a yin yang. They're yeah. just rolling <laughs> infinity, infinitely. Yes. <laughs> Dude, that was crazy. I'm like, man. That must suck. Every time <laughs> every time there was a reversal, I'm like, that sucks. And there was another reversal, I'm like, well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I keep imagining myself as the person who just got reversed. Like, come on, get your hips lower. That was so wild to me. Yeah, and it was just too, too <laughs> there's, there's bottom no, heavy on the tap. There's no getting low on that. It's, mm-hmm. it's like how I uh, explained to Derek Lewis, just get up. Uh-huh. it's hard to balance on that thing. Like the only time he got stuck on the ground is when he had a six pack. Yeah. It's the only time when he had this nice, like a uh, nice belly, it makes it a lot harder to balance on top of it. So it's probably the same thing. It's harder to flatten out someone who has so much underneath them that they just always are able to create space with that big old booty. Yeah. It's like, like, uh, have you ever seen like one of those buildings in an earthquake and it just like starts shaking, <laughs> shaking. And then it like up at the top, there's just so much more momentum. It's like that. Yeah. You just can't like, you can't stop it. Yeah. And it's just, not stiff. Yeah. The booties weren't stiff. Mm-mm. Um, it was a good fight though. of Competitive. And I'm- very strategically altered shorts. I have to add. Yes. To. Yes. They cut those things as short as the seamstresses would allow it. Those are the shorts that, uh, Poirier needs. Exactly. He needs those shorts. Those were the girl cut mm. so that he doesn't fidget with those. Because there was no fidgeting. The only time she had to fidget with her shorts was at the very end when her old ass cheek came oh, out. Oh, Jocelyn. I was yeah. Like, Jocelyn's a whole, whole. But the cameramen, they're good. They're good. They cut away. <laughs> right? They're like, this is a family show. They cut away and give the fighters their respect. They're like, no, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> Because, man, my, my butt cheek came out in my fight, but it was not nearly as aggressive. Well, you have you have a polite butt cheek. I got little little straw weight cakes. And <laughs> <laughs> especially when I fight, they're little straw weight cakes. But Jocelyn, I don't think any weight comes off of her butt when she cuts. Like, mm-hmm. that thing, it stays sturdy. Um, but I thought it was cute that they tried to, that they really squashed it. Like, super, super squashed it. And it made me think, because I'd be really surprised if the USC allowed the coach um, who was the aggressor in the corner for her fight for this one. So it made me think, like, yeah, that's true. The coach was, like, a real dick, and they got him out of there. Um, yeah, it sounded like she changed kinda... gyms. Yeah. Is what it sounded like well, without think, knowing, like, all the information. I think it's the same gym, but I think whoever that was, that extra person that was in her corner, I don't think he's there anymore. But, yeah, Good. I think it's still, like, the that Florida gym, the okay. go shed people. Um, but, yeah, I thought it was really cute that they she was on her knees begging for forgiveness, like, totally squashed. Jocelyn got down with her, and I thought that was really cute. I did too. I thought that was a really nice moment because the the commentary team were talking about it too. Like, oh, I don't think if this, um, I don't think, or I don't know if this will be squashed after this. But I mean, there is something to like, you know, going toe to toe for five rounds. Yeah. And just exhausting yourself and getting all of that emotion and energy out and then being able to like, you know. Mm-hmm. shake hands afterwards yeah they they squashed it halfway through the fight yeah yeah they, <laughs> i think somebody missed on so she like already hit her with a spinning back fist but then she missed on the second one and jocelyn was like and they're like yeah, yeah, yeah that was cool <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah that that's was always cool. nice yeah and i i've got to respect and appreciate the the humility of you know i think getting down on her knees and just you know yeah Showing some vulnerability. So that was really nice to see. And then getting up and trying to make her twerk with her. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, come on, girl. You you got the moves. I'm you gonna, got the equipment. I'm going to jumpstart your OF, too. Here yeah. you go. <laughs> it's like, you need to boost your cred so we can both be famous. <laughs> we can collab. Yeah. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? <laughs> no. No. Uh, they would take all the money from everyone. Oh, uh, don't do it, Jocelyn. <laughs> It's just not fair. It's not fair. It's not, fair. <laughs> not everybody oh. was blessed with those genetics. Man. We got to work on good camera angles and filters and all that stuff. Dude, you know what I'd do with that ass? It, poor Adam. Do you know what I would do with that <laughs> ass if you are my training partner? Dude, it would be insane. <laughs> so many bongos would be played. <laughs> Every opportunity I got. Oh, man. 
Yeah, yeah. As much as you hit my little one now, I've, if I had that booty, it would be, have handprints on it <laughs> from just every day. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was I, that was a really um, nice moment there. I was happy that they squashed it and they kind of, you know, held it down for the girls for that card. Um, but I think a lot of people were saying that the pay per view was pretty boring. You know, and I think the prelims were were more exciting than most of the fights on the pay-per-view. But um, you had Kevin Holland, who had that big arm bar break, and then you had the main event. So I thought those two held it down for the pay-per-view. Definitely. I mean, Kevin Holland is always, you know, fun to watch. Even, yeah. you know, you can always count on him to, like, pick up a lull. On a fight card. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, all right, I'm going to make it exciting. He didn't really get dropped. He was just trying to, you know, get the fans off their feet. Totally. Yeah, yeah. That punch didn't land. He was just throwing that little moment so he could set up his arm bar. Mm, exactly. <laughs> that was so crazy, though. Like, that kid, all right, we, we watched tape on the guy, and we knew that he just comes in with power. He's just, like, crazy aggressive. Kind of sloppy, but as we were saying, like, with – is on Makashev, if you come in with just that confidence, then it's hard to get out of the way of stuff. Like, things get through. You're thrown with, uh, what is it, reckless abandonment? Mm -hmm. And uh, overhands get through. Big hooks get oh, through. Yeah. And that's what got through on Holland. He was kind of backing up, trying to, you know, get his pace going. And then, whap, poof, you know, just dropped him. But what he doesn't have that Islam Makashev has is good uh, submission defense. <laughs> Mm. Like he jumped right into that triangle and then it he was... stayed like he could have been out but he got greedy mm. he got greedy he wanted to land another strike <laughs> and what is arm is it between the guy's legs he you know what it's just like this you know spatial body awareness he just forgot where his shit was for a minute yeah and it he, cost him yeah because it looked like his elbow was out right mm -hmm. like his elbow was like just past the groin area which is where you can start relaxing and just being like okay i'm out but you can't fully relax well as he just found out you can get you can easily pull that back in yes suction crotch as uh j flow likes to call it <laughs> <laughs> we know a lot of girls with some good suction crotch <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> But it's a grappling term. It's, <laughs> it's when you start to lose the arm, but then your hips just kind of suck it back in. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, Kevin Holland did really well. He has some good suction crotch. And then once he flipped him over, dude, that guy did not want to tap. No, he didn't. And I under, like I understand why, because he felt like he was in a dominant position. He felt like he had an edge. He just dropped Holland. Yeah. He like I think he was just so like tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. And and just really focused on on the fact that he could win because he just saw his his path to victory. Yeah, and this is a huge name to do it against. Mm -hmm. um, he's had success success with that in the past. Um, a lot of his knockouts were just like really big and and nasty like that, like TKO, drop him, get on top and finish. But yeah, Holland's too slick, man. You got to be careful with those guys. Like we've we've uh, seen it happen over and over again, you know. And it's just one of those things where. Once you get more experience at a high level, then you don't make those mistakes anymore. But, like, he, he made so many mistakes after dropping them. Like, it was just, like, one after the other after the other. Then he didn't tap. Now you're going to be out, like, six months. Like, come on, bro. And it was funny because Holland was telling him. You could see him talking to him. Maybe he should have uh, used those Polish words. Kurva. Kurva. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if he had actually said that to him, he would have like beasted out of it. He might have. He might have. He like, what'd you say to me? Start punching him with his broken arm. <laughs> yeah, that was, I, I like that though, because Kevin is, he's, he's such a pro. He, he knows what it is. He knew what was going on and he really did not want to like take this guy out of the game yeah. for that long no he, like, what didn't want to guy. send him to the hospital yeah he's like hey i got it i got it and that shows a lot of control too because some some people can hesitate on the arm bar and be talking and messing around and then the guy gets free you know so that that just shows how good he is on the ground as well yeah or you have somebody like um like a Sonkio or a Babalu who holds on to it just a little bit too long and yes. maliciously. Yes. 
and like really tries to hurt you and and you know end your career. Who's that guy? Uh, Polaris. Yeah. Yeah. Is that one of the people yeah. you mentioned? Yeah. Ugh, that guy. I don't know if I time. said his name right, but I thought it was Babalu. Uh, no, no. Um, Paula Harris. His nickname was I thought it was Tinky or, or okay. something like that. Yeah. No, you're probably right. I just, I used to um I only knew him by Paul Harris because that's what I thought. <laughs> I thought that was his That's name. Him. Paul Harris. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was a Brazilian name I wasn't hip to yet. Um, yeah, that guy would just rip things in. And not. that's what got him kicked out of the UFC. Yeah. Same with Babalu. Yeah, it's like people are tapping, refs are trying to <laughs> break him, and he's still on the ACL just trying to rip yeah. it apart. It's like, come on, bro. It's not a it's not a rotisserie chicken. It's a human <laughs> being with dreams and aspirations. Quit it. You won. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I was really impressed with Holland with that one. That was that was a good way to just, like, nip it in the bud, get, mm-hmm. that, get that win in, go celebrate, hang yeah. out with Trump. Sorry, girl. <sighs> you got to do what you got to do. Get that bag. Nah. Can't even be <laughs> mad at this point. Can't even be mad. Um, I thought it was really cool. Uh, Poirier having that speech at the end, though, you know, Islam was like, oh, I want to fight up. And then they went to Poirier afterwards. And he had this really beautiful speech where he was just thanking all the women in his life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was really sweet. And his poor daughter was crying. And I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not I'm not a mom, but I definitely would not want my fucking kids at my fight. Well, I think it, because it was his last one, yeah. he wanted her to come because she had never been before. Uh, so I was like, okay, this is my last fight. Like, I want you to come, and I want you to see me go through this. And if anything, it's a learning experience. Like, as a kid, it's good to learn that, hey, it's okay to fail. It's okay, whatever. You know, you're going to have your support group behind you whether you win or lose. And obviously, it's a more fun night when you win. But Yeah, I just feel like it can be, like, I mean, you know, Again, not a mother, um, but I just feel like sometimes it could just be so traumatic, <laughs> you know, yeah. like could that could that moment like even with all of like the, the talks and the this mm-hmm. and the that and like the the lessons like could something like that like permanently scar a kid? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I feel like I would be OK with it, but like. Like as a kid, because uh, I could think back to all the moment or some of the moments that kind of ring in my head is like, oh, this is probably something that happened a little too young. But at the same time, it's like, dude, what are people in other countries going through and early in their life where they just have to like overcome adversity? And it's like, yeah, you're exposing your kid to a little adversity by watching your dad lose a fight. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you guys are financially set. Mm -hmm. You know, he's an entrepreneur. Uh, This isn't something that he has to do anymore. And you get to learn life lessons from that, you know, Mm -hmm. how to overcome, how to respectfully bow out, you know, like how to address your opponent after losing something like a bit that's a really big deal to you. So I feel like as much as that can be scarring, eventually she's going to see the fights, you Mm -hmm. know. And I think if anything, she learns or she can take positives away from it as opposed mm-hmm. to the negatives. Cause there's always going to be a negative. Yeah. But, uh, but that's, that's where I feel like he was coming from. And I feel like I'd be kind of on the same page mm-hmm. too. Um, but I'm not a mother either. <laughs> and, uh, speaking of not being mothers, someone who I guess follows me on uh PlayStation gave me shit for playing Spider-Man during the Poirier fight. And I just want to let you know that that wasn't me. That was my friend's kids. So they want to interrupt us while we were watching fights. Mind your business. Mind your damn business. Come on. I was like, I was like, what's your PSN so I can block you? <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, but um, no, I thought it was. I thought it was really cool that Poirier did that speech. Uh, you know, talking about his uh, grandma who passed and his wife and his mother and um, and his daughter and then. <laughs> I was like, I wonder what, uh, I wonder if Trump's even listening to this. <laughs> he always has like this, this look on his face. Like he's not really like, like plugged in, you know? It's like, uh, I'd like to thank my daughter too. I'd love to date her. <laughs> I'd also like to thank all the women whose pussies I grabbed. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and Stormy for her discretion. <laughs> Thank you to all the women in my life. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I too think women. <laughs> um, I thought uh I thought it was uh funny that he went up to or Khabib went up to Trump too. I wonder what they were talking about. Probably making a, a secret meeting between yes. uh, him and, and him his and guys. Putin. Yeah, Putin, his boy. <laughs> Putin? Yeah. Putin gonna come a yeah, I have a message for you, brother. Yeah, yes. <laughs> More eagles will fly during the <laughs> election. <laughs> I was thinking um, that guy who scored the fight for Kose, that was probably Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> we figured out it was Dave Torelli, but that was my first thought. <laughs> like, come on, bro. He's clearly not all there. You're being too obvious. <laughs> um, yeah, the the Randy Brown fight was uh, was riddled with controversy, too. I am so upset about that fucking fight. Don't According to started. Jessica. Don't even get me started. Because that was the tiebreaker for our picks. So if you guys didn't watch our picks video... We pretty much had the same picks. We both stupidly picked Poirier um, because our hearts wanted him to win. I feel like he had a better chance than the odds for saying. Um, oh, me too. So we both picked Poirier. We picked Almeida. We picked, um, who else? What are the other two? Uh, Strickland. Strickland. And Holland. And Holland. But then we didn't agree on the Randy Brown. Dos Santos. Dos Santos fight. So I picked Randy Brown and just. Picked Dos Santos. <laughs> a, he would have mid. won had it not be from the ref letting him get eye poked four times and not letting him recover. If you think that did not change the trajectory of the fight, you are tripping. And I want it to be um, brought up to the board and I want it to mm. be appealed and I want a rematch. Well, if you saw our picks video, you would see... That Why I'm so fucking upset. The lo the loser of our bet <laughs> would have to drink a beer rito. Delicious thing that we made up just for moments like these for people who lost bets. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, if they overturn that decision, then I will drink a beer rito to commemorate that but <laughs> as it is on paper randy brown took it away he won two out of three rounds um but that was really fucked up like they he got eye poked fuck that ref i've been screaming about the gloves too so i think this is a perfect storm of new gloves plus the ref just not knowing how to ref a situation but dude what was he thinking he separated them there was it was one of those like Kind of raking. Yeah, like the post where someone comes forward and you're like, get away. And then you just kind of rake the eyeball so horribly. Um, and he separated the fight, but then he made them start fighting again. And then the clock started because it was a blatant eye poke. Whether it was, you know, I'm not saying it was intentional and like malicious, yeah. but it happened. It was visible. Yeah. By and all And he parties. was clearly having trouble. Yeah. And then... They separated him, and then all of a sudden, he just restarted. He was like, yeah, you're fine. Go. We're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then it happened again. It happened again. Like, less than a minute later. Yeah. And he was like, it didn't happen. And I'm like, it did. Oh, my God. It did. And if you think that that does not change the trajectory of a fight, you're, like, you're tripping. No, it definitely, it definitely did something. I'll give you that. But I did think that Randy Brown fought a great game. He, oh, yeah. uh, in that second round, I thought it was over. I was like, fuck. The choke was in type. It was, like, doing that to his face. Like, you know, like, that's how you know it was, like, really nasty on the job. But he didn't have enough squeeze, like that Dagestani squeeze that people do when they get that over-the-jaw mm. uh, tap. He didn't have enough squeeze to get in there um so randy brown was able to get out reverse it and then third round it was all him so. i bet his teeth hurt today though oh yeah that freaking hurts like um remember when liz fought uh ronda, ronda. rousey yeah she had yeah. the teeth marks yeah mm. that was a crazy she ronda just gutted through that which is why i always respect ronda because she did like gut through a lot of stuff she she like you know had that whole judo upcoming which I can only imagine how rough being a judoka for your entire life can be on your body. It hurts. Oh, your knees and mm -hmm. everything. So I, I always give Rhonda credit for what she was able to accomplish. And she, so many people would have tapped to that. 
Yeah. Like so many people. Like that thing looked nasty. Um, so uh yeah, Dos Santos almost had something similar. Randy Brown's chin was just a little too sneaky. He's able to get out, reverse mm-hmm. it and yeah, do his own damage. And I like how he finished the third round too. Like uh Dos Santos was able to hop on top of him as like one final call, but he was a little too high and Brown was just like bat, 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 like punching him from yeah. here. <laughs> When um in the second round when Dos Santos was like had his best round, mm-hmm. he was making really good decisions. Yeah. Like there were moments where he could have fallen off, but yeah. he was hopping to the side, he was getting the front headlock. Like he was doing really good things. Like he just had really good awareness mm. of where he was in the round. It's just, you know, he was trying to make something happen in those last 30 seconds to, yeah. that would, you know, stick out to the judges to hopefully steal it or, you know, sink in something. So he, he, you know, didn't really pay attention to the hooks. He was just trying to go for the kill, which, you know, is what he had to do. Yeah, especially in that last moment. Um, I'm trying to figure out that uh, that ref's name. Oh, here it is. Jasper Oliver. Jasper Poppy Chulo Oliver. <laughs> That's the name of the ref that decided it wasn't that bad of an eye poke. You can continue the fight. Congratulations. You are now my arch nemesis. <laughs> Oh, I hope I don't catch you anywhere near Jess's fight, Jasper. You're going to get in the neck. <laughs> oh. I will not forget. Mm. Such betrayal. Mm. Um, were there any other fights on the prelims that you want to talk about? Um, or like maybe the fight that got kicked to the prelims for some reason? That was weird, too. I don't understand that one. Why did they do that? I don't know. So in hindsight, like, okay, we we also were guilty of thinking this might be a boring fight because Romanoff goes to decision sometimes, and when he goes to decision, it's boring. Jelton I made the same deal. When he goes to decision, it's boring. Didn't expect either of them to get finished that quickly. Yeah. Because, you know, they're they're aggressors. They're, like, really good. They're defensive. Like, I expected them to just be wrestling for position, like one of those, uh, you know, elephant seal fights. <laughs> just, blah, blah. <laughs> Belly fighting. That they're, fighting. Like, nobody ever wins. They just gas out until <laughs> they get tired, and then they just, like. It can go on for two days. <laughs> 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 the first one to get tired loses. <laughs> um, yeah, and so that fight was really impressive by um Jalton Almeida. But for some reason it got kicked to the prelims and they put on Nico Price versus um what's the kid's Marone. name? Um uh, Morono. Uh-huh. Which was a Morono move if you ask me. Uh, <laughs> good one. Yeah. Um yeah, what did you think about that? Like Well I didn't realize that um Morono was stepping in on short such short notice. Oh he was originally supposed to fight Jeremiah Wells, I believe. Hmm. And I thought that was going to be a super exciting fight. Okay. And, I mean, hats off to Morono. Like, he came in, you know, clearly not in <laughs> fight shape. <laughs> no. <laughs> and he had he had a rough night, but he he was a gamer, and he stayed in there. And he I was mean, in the fight the whole time. He yeah. was. He was doing his best, but you could just tell, like, he just didn't have enough to put, like, any kind of finishes or stamps on, on the rounds or what are you smirking at? Oh, nothing. I just pulled out my little drink that I... Oh. <laughs> really? What is happening? Like, don't don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> no judgment here. I got me a little uh, basil half as. Oh, nice. Basil half as and soda. So nice. Yeah, it's good. Thanks. Enjoy that. Thanks for that. No problem. Um, and I mean, Nico Price is a handful. So if you come in out of shape on short notice, that's, yeah. that's a rough night. And I didn't realize it was a rematch. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, I did not realize that, but they fought like almost a decade ago. Dang. Yeah. Okay, who won the first one? Nico. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now I put a stamp on it. Won't yeah. happen again. Yeah, <laughs> Nico, Nico had been on a little bit of a skid, so this was, you know, a much needed win for him. Yeah, who was his last loss? It was against, um, um, what's the name that retired, right? Uh, just that was kind of, he kind of took one for the team for that one like i know he didn't lose on purpose but like why can't i see it was um oh hold on here why is 
It's so hard to get all this information. <laughs> I'm mad. I'm going to be so mad when uh, the, the fight gets pulled up. But uh, uh, Pat Sabatini. Uh, Robbie Law- Lawler. That oh. was his last loss. No. And, or no, not his last loss. Oh, no, no, no. He grappled. Sorry. That was, um, yeah. yeah. Robbie Lawler was his last loss. And then before that, it was Phil Rowe, who yeah. also fought last night. Mm, yeah. Phil Rowe looked really good, too. Um, but he did not win. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, wait, <laughs> it didn't go his way. He looked good in the first round. Um, but yeah, he, he was the dance partner of Robbie Lawler's insane send off. Like he just got knocked out first round. Robbie Lawler got to do this like heroes, like, um, uh, send off for his last fight in the UFC and um it was pretty epic but it, the whole time I was just like man it must suck to be Nico Price right now I know <laughs> you know like everyone's so happy for Rob Le- Robbie and it was a fight where you didn't really know what was going to happen um Nico Price is still very much a competitor and very much like you know very uh what do you call it skilled fighter um can get knockouts in the weirdest ways imaginable yeah. he knocked out randy brown with something weird i think it was like a hammer he fist. was on like <laughs> he was like bottom half guard hammer fist yeah it was crazy yeah it didn't make any sense but he's like that's that's you know his his superpower yeah that's nico price's superpower is that he can just like make it weird and dangerous mm. anywhere and that's what, when I was watching that uh, Murano fight, I was like, man, he's just going to hit like a, a one to seven hammer fist and get right through his guard and drop him cold. Like, that's what I was imagining happening. Unfortunately, we just saw how tired Murano was and Nico Price was able to do his thing against him. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think it would have made more sense to have the Jalton Almeida fight on the pay-per-view just because he was almost a title contender he was right there the loss to curtis blades like that set him back but it shouldn't have set him back that much well this this kind of like counters that so i feel like he's right back up there now yeah for sure but i'm kind of surprised that they put him so low on the card me too and there was another Almeida after him. So I'm, I'm, I was also thinking maybe they mixed up the Almeidas. Like whoever was writing down the, the <laughs> writing down the, the order of the fights, they were like, yeah, put Almeida first and then Almeida second on the prelims. And then they just, their wires were crossed. That, um, that Almeida versus Coppola fight was the other weird scoring. Oh, what was the score? I don't remember. Um, I think I was doing me. stuff. <laughs> Let me pull it up. I was wrangling the kids <laughs> during that one. Auntie Ange. <laughs> Turning on Spider Man. <laughs> Not playing it. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> My business. Seriously. God damn. You anyways. Um, Caesar Almeida mm. versus Roman Kopilov. Mm. And then um so it was kind of a weird scoring, but somebody I think Chris Lee gave him the second and the third. And I think only one other judge gave him the second. So that was a weird one because, um, and, and people were really. And Chris Lee is another one on my list. He's really inconsistent. He, uh, that's why I'm saying, I think people, I think these judges, a lot of times they'll go like good judging, good judging, good judging, good judging. Hey, let's make some money. <laughs> hey let's grease our pockets a little bit we only get paid like 50 bucks a night like let's 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 make some cash oh, i get that <sighs> it, it's frustrating yeah when, yeah there just needs to be some consistency because he has hooked me up too not hooked me up like i don't feel like oh I, did you did he give you a little kickback i don't think i would well, <laughs> take you out to dinner afterwards with his 50 <laughs> here you go he just threw it at me as i walked out the cage here you go sweetheart buy yourself something nice <laughs> just imagine he is like a smoker voice <laughs> all the casinos you know <laughs> all the casino shows um no but i i know he's been on my good side with decisions too um but yeah it's just inconsistent there's been a lot of calls where they say who scored what and i'm like fucking chris lee <laughs> and now Dave Torelli. I wasn't super aware of him, but now you are. Now I am. Yeah. Fucked me on Gedalia fight. <laughs> but 
But uh, people were really, uh, people were frustrated about this fight because Kapilov just, like, he kept going for takedowns that mm. Almeida could not stop. Yeah. And he okay, was just, that. like, really, like, grovelly down on the bottom. He really wasn't landing strikes. He was just, mm. like, holding and controlling. And Almeida was kind of waiting to get let up. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he was closing his guard. He just, he was making really poor decisions while he was down there, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't really need to work on his defense down there, but he wasn't trying to get up. He, his guard was locked. He wasn't moving his hips really. Yeah. It was just. He was hanging out. Yeah. He wasn't going for things. He wasn't setting up submissions. Nothing. He just wanted to get back up. And he was doing damage when he was up on top. Mm -hmm. And he was he was forcing Kapalov to, like, go so hard for those takedowns. Yeah. And it was it was one of those, like, okay, so Almeida probably had more damage with his strikes because he was he was throwing like you know he was sharp throwing hard but Kapilov like he just his, his takedowns couldn't be stopped yeah so what did it more what was more impressive yeah was it the the small amount of strikes that were you know damaging power punches or all of the control time and um you know when it comes down to that type of fight you can't really be too mad at what the judges end up seeing because it's such a gray area. Like we haven't been consistently defining this is what works as opposed to this, mm -hmm. because even though Kapilov wasn't really landing much on the ground, he was still probably landing more on the ground than uh, Almeida landed on the feet. It was that, but it was more volume wise. So it was like, okay, if, they're landing more volume on the ground, but this guy did the biggest blows on the feet, and then there's all this control time. What are we going to score? Mm -hmm. So, like, that, it, it, it really is Almeida's fault for losing that fight um, because he didn't try to get up. Yeah. And I think it was Herb that was the referee, mm -hmm. and he was just like, that's not going to do it. You know, every time uh, Almeida did like double overs on Kapilov's arms and just kind of hung out and waited, Herb was just like, you got to get yourself up, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, You're the one stalling, not him. There's two men in this fight, not three. Yeah. No, it, it is pretty funny seeing how that evolves, too, because a lot of times in the past, you'd get stood up there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think eventually there was a stand up. In that fight? In the third, I think. Yeah, yeah. eventually. But, like, you've you've got to work to get up. You cannot rely on the judges to separate you yeah. because you're doing a good job of stalling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was, like, my game plan for a long time. <laughs> like, I, when I first started getting taken down all the time, I was like, maybe I'll just hold him until I get stood up. And uh, it used to work back in the day, but I think the refs got wise to it and realized it's not really fair for the fighter on top who worked to get to that position if the fighter on bottom is just going to stall. Like, if the fighter on top isn't the one stalling, then they should be allowed to stay in that position. There was... um. Ah, uh, there was one thing I wanted to talk about. Oh. So it was um in the Jocelyn Eileen fight. Oh yeah. And it was I think it was the second round and Jocelyn I believe was winning that round with like mm. the the control time um with everything, but that was the round that Eileen uh did a spinning back fist and oh, dropped yeah, her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So does back so fist. the question is is does that one moment outweigh all of the body of work in a round right and um let me see what the score was for that she got 327 on one judge so i think one judge gave her that round and the other two were 29 28 um and yeah i i feel like it shouldn't especially if she like i think if there was if it was equal striking then you can consider the bigger moments mm -hmm. of each fighter and if you're getting controlled the whole time, but you had like a really big moment where you dropped them and you really just stole the round, then that's different. But she landed one punch. It was that spinning back fist. It, it was a big reaction from Jocelyn, but that was the only moment that she lost that round. Mm -hmm. And uh, a similar thing happened to me in the Lemos fight, where in the first round, there was a big moment. I get hit with the push kick. Uh, I fell down, but then immediately after... 
grappled on top, was working for the submission, got up, landing big blows the entire rest of the round, and they scored the first round for Lemos. So you kind of have to think, okay, who's doing more MMA? Who is winning this whole exchange? What is going to happen, um, you know, in the long run? Mm -hmm. And if Jocelyn was able to get on top of her and still impose herself after that big moment, then you can't just take one moment and give the person around because of that. Because there wasn't really much striking landed on uh, Perez's account in that second round aside from that, right? Mm -mm. Yeah, so. No, she was on the ground. She was like defensive mode for most of that. And when I heard like um, the, uh, I think it was specifically, I think it was probably Joe Rogan. He was like, oh, well, she just won that round. I was like, no, no, no. Like if you're. It's like how close do you think that round was? It wasn't before close. You said that. Yeah. There yeah. was so much control time. And I mm -hmm. feel like that just outweighs like that one, one strike. Yeah. It's hard. And it's, um, if people are, are leaning more towards damage it's like well I don't want to say it's not fair but I just don't it doesn't quite compute because MMA is a sport and there's a lot of technical aspects and strategies to it mm -hmm. and so if if one strike outweighs all of that all the volume all this all that like it, it just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me yeah um when you think about uh how they how they think about concussions and Basically, every punch that you take is giving you a little micro concussion. Mm -hmm. um, whether you get dropped by it or not, or, or not, that's a different story. So if you want to say like 10 micro concussions equal one drop <laughs> or something like that, we could compute it in that way. And Edwards landed maybe 20 or 30 micro concussions. And then uh, Perez only landed one actual droppage. That's like the equivalent of 10 micro concussions. Mm. And you know what I mean? Like if, if we could like get super nerdy and technical like that, then that would make more sense if you're going to say, okay, their volume doesn't equal their one moment. And if she's landing all these punches, that's accumulating. Like, she didn't come out of there unscathed. She got hit in that round. She was accumulating damage. You can't take uh, an accumulation of damage and control and outweigh it over one moment. Mm -hmm. But I do think the right person won, obviously. Sure. It just sucks to try to guess where people's mindset is every time you get out there and fight. Like, yeah. you, there's so much... Uh, excuse me there's it's it's almost like you you expect judging to get better in mma but it's either stayed the same or gotten worse i think everything else in mma is is getting better it's evolving but yeah. yes that one aspect this is it's a key aspect it's a very important piece to the puzzle and there needs to be a lot of understanding and transparency in it and there mm -hmm. is none yeah and they were talking on the um on the uh uh, commentary about open scoring too and how that would bring a lot more transparency to it um i would love that i think it would at least get people wise to okay either this is what judges are looking for or this is what this specific judge is looking for um we, we mentioned eric nixick earlier he looks at who's the judge when his fighters are fighting and he tries to play to their interests. Mm -hmm. Like if he knows this guy likes volume more, he knows this guy likes control time more. He knows, you know, this person doesn't score leg kicks, you know, like that, yeah. like fucking there are judges like that. And so if anything, having that uh, open scoring would keep everyone kind of in the know of what someone's going to lean towards. You're like, all right, that did not score for us this round. Yeah. We need to do this. Yeah, exactly. It would be a great thing to be able to adapt to that on the fly. And the it should moment. have a picture of the judge's face next to their score per round, and that would make them up their level and not be a fuckhead. Give me their Twitter, yes. their Instagram, <laughs> and their Facebook. Make them have active socials. Show me where they live, where they drink coffee. Like, <laughs> I mean, honestly, with some of the sites, we'd probably find out where everyone lives. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Let's do it. Yeah. But we need that uh, transparency, and I, I think it'll up the level of uh, – the judges, because no one wants to be made fun of. No one wants to have their name in people's mouths when it comes to, like, that guy fucked up. That guy shouldn't be working here. And Dana has started being more vocal about situations like that. Like, I think he spoke out about Dave Torelli and was like, he shouldn't be 
shouldn't be judging fights anymore. Oh, he was pissed about the Strickland Costa fight. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's good. The more we have uh, people's names next to what they did and when it looks like they really fucked up, the more that we're going to have people in there who are trying not to be bad at the job. Mm -hmm. Right now, it doesn't seem like there's any consequences. There there are no consequences. (laughs) So why would they change? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just like you, if, um, uh, who did Holland fight? Ole- um, Olenchik. Yeah, yeah, Olenchik. If he had won, <laughs> if he had won that fight, mm-hmm. if he, you know, had gotten out of that arm bar, he never would have learned that, like, hey, I need to make these adjustments. It's just like... Don't punch someone when when their legs when are around your arm. your arm is in <laughs> their crotch. Yeah, don't punch someone there. Just defend it. But, you know, luckily, there's a really good lesson in that. Don't, yeah. don't do that. That doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. That's danger. Yeah, we need these judges to get the same wake up call. <laughs> and Dana talking shit about you is a wake up call. So, oh, yeah. Hopefully that helps. Um, but yeah, I think um, across the board, everyone's kind of confused about what judges fights and what doesn't. And, you know, the more people say things that aren't true, the more people are going to be more confused. Sure. You know? um, the Basel Hafez versus Mickey Gall fight was another one where people are just like, huh? Yeah, that was a controversial one. But how good did Mickey Gall look? He looked great. I thought he was going to get smashed. You know what? You just... <laughs> no, I was it's, like, it's going to be a tough comeback. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a really, really tough comeback, and, and he delivered. He yeah. really rose to the occasion. Mm-hmm. And it's always nice, um, especially with somebody who has taken so many long layoffs, yeah. for, to, to see that it's it's possible to get out in there and, like, you know, kind of not miss a beat. Mm-hmm. It, it's very encouraging. Yeah. No, it was great. Um, Basil Hafez... Um, Basel is Basel, right? Or is it? It's not Basil. <laughs> Listen, I'm Italian. It sounds. It's it the, sounds like one of my favorite herbs. Yeah, we all. we got called out by Basel himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. After a little video, <laughs> he's like Basil. Come on, but it was, it's it delicious. Was, it was for the joke. We needed the Basil Basil Hayden reference to hit. It wouldn't have hit if we pronounced your name right. So, <laughs> listen, I fuck up everybody's name, Basil. and honestly, <laughs> people can't even say my last name right. Oh yeah, what is it? Penny, Penny, Penny. <laughs> they say Penny. They say Penny or yeah. or Pena. Or Pena or Panay. I get that a lot. Oh, Panay. Panay. Yeah, that's Joe Rogan's version. Yeah. Yeah, Jessica Panay. <laughs> it's like, get it right. You're, she's a grappler. You're supposed to be on her side. No, you don't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, uh, Basil Hafez, he had that crazy fight with, uh, who was it, Jack Della? Uh, Della Mandela. Yeah, he had that crazy fight with him. And uh, people were like, oh, okay, well, he... That guy went on to greatness, and he came in short notice and was able to put on that crazy fight with him. So Mickey Gall coming in and fighting this guy was kind of a tall order Mm -hmm. after such a long layoff. After what he's looked like in the past, too. Like, he seemed to have trouble with strikers, people who were, like, good in the pocket and stuff. It's that body type, too. As somebody with a long, linky body type. It's the, it's the like. Wacky, wavy, inflatable, too. Like w- wacky, it, wavy, jiu-jitsu guy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like there, there are tough matchups for, for everyone mm-hmm. and for body types. And he's a noodle. And he's a noodle. <laughs> I, too, am a noodle. <laughs> I Noodles <understand>. unite. <laughs> I understand. And, like, so when you fight somebody with a lower center of gravity who's more, like, short, stocky, explosive. And dense. And dense. It, it poses its, its own problem. You have to fight somebody a very specific way. Mm-hmm. You, mm-hmm. you really do. Just like, you know, Nisik is talking about looking at the, the judges to see what they like. Like, yeah. you have to look at the body types. For sure. You know, it's, um, there's so many little like nuances and, and strategies that you have to pull out like to, on, on all of these things. Yeah. And uh, that's one of them. It's really hard for a long linky person to fight somebody with that body type. Yeah. With the pressure, with like, you know, the, the in pocket boxing and stuff, but Mickey Gall's boxing was like showing Great. up. It's like as soon as he got comfortable in there, as soon as he started landing on Hafez, he really 
started landing even more. <laughs> it was crazy. No, I was in awe because I know he likes to grapple. I know he likes to get it to the ground, but he looked really comfortable on his feet and he was landing power. Like his his shots were making more of a were giving more of a reaction than Hafez's big shots. Mm-hmm. And I was just super impressed with that combat. I, I feel like even with a loss, because I wasn't sure who won. And I think people were mostly mad about the 30 27 yep. when it comes to the judges. Um I wasn't sure who won. But I thought like it could have been two to either guy at the end of it, and one dummy made it thirty twenty seven. But um, I felt like it was a really close fight, mm-hmm. and uh, it was it was pretty epic, man. Like I, I was also sad that they didn't get fight at night because yeah, I felt like they could have used the money a little more. <laughs> yeah, but it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. You also, it was nice if in, in case it's Dustin Poirier's last fight it was nice to put that little stamp on it like this was the fight of the night Mm -hmm. and then islam got a little extra kickback (laughs) 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 you get two bonuses (laughs) good job um but yeah that was that was a pay-per-view points wow must be nice it must be so nice um any other little fights you want to talk about before we hit our exclusive 15 uh no let's just jump right on over all right let's go we'll see See you guys on the flip side 